Hello everybody, and welcome to the latest Worlds of ZZT livestream, where today we are returning to the ZZT Encyclopedia. Hello, hello everybody. Sorry I, that took a minute, I had to ban a spam bot from the Discord, where we're really taking off, we have spam bots now. But that's all said and done. So we can instead read an encyclopedia. Uh, we started going through this last week. We, we got to see some cool bombs and machine guns and other fun weapons. We, we learned about how to produce blinking colors. And today we're going to pick up where we left off here on World 4. Counters? We're going to learn about shopping, I guess. Very exciting stuff. Also, I don't think it's going to get picked up on the mic, but I do want to provide an update on the bird that, that you know, tore a hole in our wall outside and made a nest in there. Bird has become birds. There are very clearly babies chirping regularly. So that's fun. So, we have... Are too many occupants in this apartment now, I suspect. But at least someone's getting a good deal in Seattle. Uh, they seem to they seem to go very quiet once the sun goes down, which is appreciated. They kind of calmed down now. They were kind of chirping up a storm like ten minutes ago. I guess they realize that I'm streaming. That's very nice of them. But if you hear bird noises. And it's not a bird outside. It's not the bird clock. It's probably the wall birds, which are also a thing. But enough about birds. Let's let's check out this encyclopedia. See what it has to offer us today. Counters. I gotta remember to turn up the volume. In ZZT, there are six counters. They are your items. Ammo, torches, gems, score, health, and time. Only four are practical to use, however, since time is a one-board counter, which is always changing, and which is not stored in the board memory when you save. So this is one of the things I was talking about with wondering how dated this information would be. It's, it's a fun sentence to say, but CZ tiers didn't really understand time, as in the counter. But again, this encyclopedia is by the author of Chrono Wars, so probably both, really. But, uh, you know, I think David N. does. There's at least one British person who, who calls it ZZ. But, we, but time, if you enable it on a board, does indeed only count down, and it acts weird because... It displays the difference between the time limit and the time that's counted up, and it's just weird and kind of awkward. But as it turns out, if you use the time counter on a board that doesn't have a time limit, you can just use it like a normal counter, and it resets every time you enter the board, and that can be useful. And it's also actually completely hidden from the player, which is a nice change of pace compared to always being able to see every other value. You can't hide information if you're doing work with numbers normally. It is a comparatively recent discovery of the past, I don't know, five years or so. But yes, it is. It's, it's a very useful counter now. Now everybody loves the time counter, but here in 2002, they think it's kind of a waste. Health, meanwhile, might work, but it cannot be zero because that would end your game. Ammo, torches, gems, and perhaps score are perfect counters? That's an interesting interpretation, because score is the only one that really doesn't do anything, and well, neither do gems. I mean, ammo and torches, if you're using those for things that aren't ammo and torches, then you can't use ammo and torches. Uh, nope, nope, it, ZZT checks if the time limit is a non-zero value, and the time limit and the time counter are two different things. If the time limit's zero, then it just doesn't bother handling the time counter. So as long as you don't have a, a time limit active, you can just use time like any of these other ones. 
make and hold any value from 0 to 32,767. Torches have a visual bug. If they go past 1,000, though, the display for torches can only hold three digits, as ECT will allow it to go past 1,000, but for some reason the display will not show it. These engines allow you to do things such as multiplication, value setting, and multi-counter functions, as well as tricks with the display. All right, well, we're going to solve this mystery right away. Here's why the torch's counter only goes up to three digits. And also, I am specifically using regular ZZT and not the custom HUD because I realize we're going we're gonna to need to show off all these fancy tricks. And we will need the vanilla game for that. There we go. It's because the spots for the other digits just get the little torch meter. I like this mystery menu we've got. I'm going to keep this board dark. Time A. Passage. Alright, I got a... 50, I think? Ooh. I think I liked 50. That seems good. Alright, now here we do have a time limit. Giving time. So all this time stuff is going to be, like, really useless. Because it's going to be for regular time boards, which aren't... I mean, they're fine, but... If you're trying to do fun, weird ZZT stuff, you're probably not using time limits. Try going through the maze in 30 seconds. Can't do it? Grab the time givers along the way. This one is easy if you know the nature of giving and taking time. You might think that when you give time, the number goes higher, but that is not so, because time cannot go beyond the time limit. Give makes it go down. That way, it can keep giving and giving and hurting you each time it crosses zero. This is a terrible explanation. Then going back to the time limit. However, take time will give you that much time, but it will not give you an extra second of doing so will give you more time than the time limit. Fitting nature of the time command. And some extreme Chrono Wars vibes from this. So what's actually happening is time the time limit is set to 30. The time counter starts at zero and ticks up to 30. And when, when those numbers are equal, then you you get hurt for time. But the display shows the difference between the values. Anybody like Jeopardy? You love that, that little 10 second Jeopardy jingle? Who owns Jeopardy? Is it, is it too late for them to sue? I suspect they're fairly litigious. Let's hear it one more time. Yeah! Yeah, IMO put Hannah in charge of Jeopardy. There's this, this, this nice lady on Mastodon named Hannah, this nice rat lady, and she, she draws cool rat pictures. I'm like, okay, I'll follow you. And then she went on Jeopardy and has been very successful on Jeopardy, apparently, so good for her. Now it's time for shopping. Love a good ZZT store. There's 10,000 ways to do it, and I guess we're gonna see one. Shop, yep, we're even, we're crediting Tim Sweeney. Tim Sweeney, inventor of shopping. Just go up to the shopkeeper and ask for a few things. He takes your money and gives you what we request. If you don't have enough, he doesn't give it to you. This is really easy, yeah. Label. Take the gems, give the items. It's a little fancier here with the keys. This example lets you break into his stock and take everything. If you ask the shop again, he says he's out of business. Well, that'll be fun. All right, we got all the essentials here. Five pack of ammo, 10 pack of ammo. Let's buy a 10 pack. Let's see, is he gonna walk around to some ammo? Okay, no, the ammo we get instantly. Well, the health drink. That looks like an object over there. Okay, just, just the key is fancy. So I do like this. I kind of wish the encyclopedia actually had more stuff like this, because yes, this is the basics, but 
it's it's good to have the basics documented somewhere like this. This is probably like a super helpful board for new ZZ tiers. Making shops like this is not uncommon, and having the little little extra detail with the key, I think, is a nice way to show doing a little bit more with it. And this, of course. Luckily, he didn't turn around. Some jerk came in and stole everything. I'm out of business. Oh. Oh, well. Well, if you could have done that over here, you should have done that earlier. And that's shopping. And shoplifting. Now you know. Right, continuing our mystery here. Time B. Okay, so we're doing another time. Oh, now we're using our gems. <sighs> Tim Sweeney may have invented shopping, but Alexis Chanson invented an alternate form of time. This is a lot like time A, but works different. It can span across boards, only counts down once, and uses the gems to count down. In time B, a master object is used, one for each board in the maze. First takes gems to zero, then sets it to 100 and counts down from there. It uses a precious gems counter. Are the gems precious, or is the counter precious? Unlike time A, this one can span across boards. When gems run out, so does the time. Oh, look at this little pros and cons list. No master object, less code, no precious... I guess that's supposed to be counters, but I'm assuming cats. Bands across boards, easier concept. Only in one board, weird time concept. Master object, more code, uses gems. So now that we all know whether we want to use time A or time B, we've got all the information we need. Also, the little time givers in this one can give you gems beyond the 100 gem time limit. A disadvantage? Not really, just a difference. All right, we'd love to run across these little mazes. You definitely see B a lot more than you see the, the A type. Even when you do want a countdown on a board, a lot of times people wouldn't use time just because of that running out of time jingle. It's always really weird. I, I play Dark Soul. Not Dark Souls, Dark Soul I played recently for ZZT. And that has a moment where you, you have to run away after you plant a bomb, and it just uses ZZT's time counter. And it's really weird for this serious game about biological experiments and being chased down in a oppressive cyber city. And then you just hear that Jeopardy jingle. I'm gonna get plenty of gems, though. And of course, you know, if you're just doing one board, you just have one object and have it idle away until the time runs out. I bet there's going to be a time C, actually, just for that. Counter flags. See, this is also one of the worlds I'm very worried walking into boards like this with just a whole bunch of ammo and gems is going to screw things up. Ported from Megazooks, ooh. This one should do the trick. I checked it and it should work now, okay. It works like this. People who do not know the meaning of the following words phrases. Okay. Bit, fight, least, most significant bit. Probably won't understand the explanation. If you want a better explanation, email me. Good lord. N is the flag number and clear takes them. The effect of this is that if you see your torch count as a bite, it sets bit N, one being the least significant bit. Also, the routines first check whether the flag was already set, so it can only be cleared, and the set routine will do nothing. If not, it can only be set, and the clear routine will do nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check routine. Let's just play with this instead of reading this word salad. Oh, this is still going. CZT forever. Okay, you won me back in the end. Let's 
clear. Yeah, so we're just using we're just using each bit and then checking for each bit. That's fine. One, two, and five. Let's check. One, two, three. Actually, I want to see the code for this. Let me find the board in the editor. Because I know you can do this. I'm just curious, how tedious is it to write out the code to check all these things? Okay, I found the board. Let's see here, check. Oh, well, let's see, setting. Okay, you're not even using this object. Oh, I guess you're using these two. Right, so you set your powers of two. Okay, yeah, this is this is why this technique isn't super popular. It's it's very code wordy. All that just to check one value. Although I guess, yeah, it does get shorter with each one because the other bits don't need to matter. Still, this is quite a lot. How much, how big is this board? Oh, in kilobytes. I mean, okay, you can, you can do stuff. That's not something I ever recall anybody actually using so much. All right, what do we got next? New row. Random power-ups. Oh. That's one way to do it. Random items. All you have to do is have an object constantly changing the items, so that's random which one you get. Touch the small O to change the rate at which they change. It does look neat. I'm a, I think that's the fastest. Yeah. Let's slow it down. Alright, so there it's like gameable. And now it's easy. Scrolls is power up. Who says scrolls can only give you messages? They also support an abbreviated ZZT oof of their own. That's a nice way of saying that some commands make ZZT crash when they're in scrolls. Instant power ups. And they work right when you walk on them too, unlike power up objects. Too bad scrolls can't change character. Well, that was a power down. There we go. Oh. That was that was a bullet. Some interesting power up ideas here. That's fun though. I could see that being used either of those. A display fixer. Well, first we have to break the display, I would assume. Okay. Touch the object and watch it make the problem, then fix it. Silicon Valley, everybody. Problem comes from taking a three digit amount from a counter, it leaves a residual units digit, which makes no bearing on how much of that thing you have on the time. Thank you, I'm glad you liked my joke. What it does is this give torches 100, take torches 50 twice. Okay, this, this is the great. Look at this. CCT is great. It may look weird, but it works and fast. I will give you 200 torches. Thank you. I will now take away 199. Yuck! It now says torches 10. How can we solve that? 
Ah, much better. I like when these demonstrations have personality like this. This is a good one. This world's been pretty good so far. These have all just been fun to see. Another setting. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Now we get this lovely background. This is the Golden H4. The following engines use a series of loops, gives, and takes for a faster effect, but more code. You can modify this to this. This is another. Well, I mean, this is fine. This is another thing, though, where I think, like, the most space efficient way to zero out a counter isn't actually this big series of loops like this, but just taking powers of two. Enjoy your date. You can you can tell them about the power up scrolls. Counter setting. Set ammo to fifteen. Get the ammo or shoot it off. Or heck, just use the ammo cheat. Get the ammo to the exact value you want, then touch the object. It sets the ammo to exactly fifteen. The same as set ammo to fifteen. Oh, that's that's specifically like a line of robotic. That's how you do it in Megazooks. Okay. Real easy. It takes everything, then it gives it. Yeah, that's simple stuff. You can see how slow that was, though. Like, even this method is not super fast, like they say. Counter copying. This one sets the ammo to torches. Unfortunately, it has to use another counter, gems, to do so. So this would be a great instance in, in which tying would be useful, because that counter gets reset on every board change anyway, so it's a, it's a great temporary counter. Good job. You set my ammo to torches. Let's try this again. There we go. Even better. Decrement ammo by torches, else can't. One subtracts torches from ammo, unfortunately has to use gems. Sets gems to zero, drains torches to gems, has a loop of taking one to gem from gems, taking one from ammo, and giving one back to torches. If you can't take any more ammo, it takes what it can down to zero, then sets gems to zero. Goodness. They really need to give you more stuff so you can see this effect in action. It doesn't work very well with just single-digit values. Counter Draining by Epic Mega Games. Thank you, Epic Mega Games. Get any torches you want, or use question mark. I don't care. Touch the object. It'll take away all your torches and add them to ammo. Just as easy as the other one, but different. Go cycle one. Goes to the loop of taking real torches and give me the ammo. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This one is used in Best of ZZT games. It drains all your items to your score. It gives more than one score for each item at the end of the games. It is, it is nice that they're attempting to cite previous examples. Counter incrementing. I think we get the idea here. There we go. This, is, this seems more fun. Counter dividing. That gems to zero, drains ammo to gems, and does a loop of taking two from gems and giving S back to ammo. They divide by three, take three from gems, and so on. The code multiplying. Given A over B is a fraction to multiply ammo by, here's the code for doing it. Touch lock. We loop. We take a bunch of gems until we can't. Take a bunch of ammo until we can't. We give a gem in the process. Yeah, okay, there's our there's our fraction. What's this? Multiply? No, this one's just the halving. Alright, well sometimes you just gotta do some work. Maximum. 
I've reached my health limit. I am as healthy as I'll ever be. They all have limits. Most useful for health, especially in RPGs. Go around and pick up the items or try to cheat. Health is capped at 150, ammo at 50, torches 20, gems 30. Yeah, so we just have an object constantly checking if you have more than the maximum. And if it can, it just gets rid of it all and gives you the limit instead. This method, there's no way to exceed the limit, and that makes this a cheat-proof engine as well. Do not run through a field of gems when your health is at its limit. It will set off the endgame sound off super speed mode. This can be fixed with a save reload, but it's a bug I really can't fix. I don't think that should be the case. I think this is another instance, though, where the code is just not efficient enough and it takes too long. You shouldn't... As long as the player's health is not zero when the player gets to tick, you never die. That's the only time that checks. You can have the player at zero health for an entire cycle. As long as at the very end something gives you health, you'll be okay. Yeah, it is... Yeah, and just like that... Very weird of them to make it so easy to demonstrate this. Also, this kind of... Like, a lot of people did do games with limits like this for things, but you, you usually don't want to use, like, the actual items if you're doing these kind of limits. Because now I'm just wasting all these gems that I'm picking up and torches. They're just going away instead of having an, the object check before giving me them in the first place. All right, well, we're dead, so we're gonna not be bringing ourselves back. And see what the next rope has to, has to offer us. I have to say, I do like keeping this board dark. I might do that this for, like, all of these. I like the surprise. Counter testing. Don't like the background. But yes, I love these these buggy engines. I was like, yo, you gotta see this. We gotta have this in the guide. Counter testing. Same thing. Didn't we already see this, like, last time? Or maybe I just picked a random passage when I was just looking at this before streaming it. Okay. So we're figuring out if you have 15 ammo. I... it's really not... paragraphs of text. It doesn't need this much. You take 15 ammo, if you can. And you either have 15 ammo, or more than 15 ammo. If you can take one more ammo after that, you have more than 15 ammo. If you couldn't, you have 15. If you couldn't take any in the first place, you have less than 15. That's all it is. Uh... Today? Maybe. 2002 honestly feels a bit late. I feel like the heyday was like 99, 2000. Like if you look at the numbers at least. This actually, the there is an article I published just today for patrons, like right before this. I didn't even do the announcement yet, but I ended up looking at the what was a contender for Game of the Month in like 1999 versus in 2002 or whenever it ended, and it's kind of night and day, like, how many things would be like, yeah, this could potentially have won. But yeah, oh, yeah, huh? I guess 2002 is kind of like the tail end of it. But 2001 has, like, 400 releases. The previous years have in the 300s, so it's basically, like, a game a day. Oh, uh, there is a stats article on the museum, I think that... 
At least one of them includes a chart like that. Let me find that super quick. I'm gonna just search stat. That might be in the last one. Well, you know what? I'll just do this. One of these articles probably has exactly what you're looking for, but they do have some stuff with uh, with what was uploaded to the museum in each year for each year historically. So you can see, like, oh, we're finding lots of worlds from 1997 or whatever. Super speed. Let's go. The color choices in this world are really something else. Look at our helpful demonstration centipede. Touch the object, it says your game is over, but you still live. It's great, it's an unfixable bug when we're doing the, the maximum counter limits, but now it's a cool new feature. All you can hear is your own steps, and things are as screwy as the Twilight Zone. Okay. Yeah, see, KM, this person instantly figured it out. They add an idol to make sure that the end game like happens, and then you get health back. At that point, it gives you 100 health, which isn't so good if you had more health before. It has little use, but it's cool with a K and a W and an E. Many good letters. Oh, I love the color effect, though. This actually looks really neat. It is cool, actually. Cool. Look at that cool centipede. Alright. They, they make no mention of the fact that if you reload your game, it, it's back to normal. But yes, this is a... That's officially the KEWL centipede map. Oh, counter to counter. Testing. More Kronos. I mean, he did put the whole thing together, so I guess it's not a surprise that so much of this is his. This will compare your ammo gems. We... We just had... Oh, I guess before it was just a... To a, a constant. Okay, so it keeps taking ammo and gems until one of them reaches zero. Fine. Then takes one from each one to see which one has reached zero first. Meaning that the lesser one. The torch's counter is sacrificed for the cause. We salute you, torch counter. See, this is one of those things where it's like, okay, you can do this, but now you are using three counters, and it takes this long to figure out which number is a bigger number. It's not really practical. Give me more shopping instead. Oh, I'm out of torches now. The torches were sacrificed. Status engine. This one actually is pretty neat. I don't think anybody ever actually did anything with this. And I think saving and loading fixes it. Yeah, actually, it definitely would. I think if you made a game that was meant to be beaten in one sitting and one which didn't kill the player, you could do this. And it would be neat. It would be cool. This KM fellow, they've... They clearly know their stuff. So this time our weird stray digit thing is actually going to be exploited to turn it into a pseudo counter. Pick up the various items, look at your inventory, a number will appear next to your score. That number is the amount of items you have. You can then pick up the other items or discard the ones you have in the blue trash can. Love a blue trash can. Each time you get an item or throw it away, a message is sent to the main object to update the number. It's also set up to update whatever you type plus recalc. Okay. 
When the main object receives a message, it gives you a large amount of score, then takes one for each item you have, and then takes a bunch, and then takes one back for each item you have. The result is the same amount of score, but with a leftover digit equal to the amount of items you have. And that digit can go up to 9. Which is the same as the flag limit, which is actually 10. Do be careful. Stray digit will stay in the display as long as your score doesn't exceed 9,999. Otherwise, the digit will be covered. In a game using this engine, do not use the counterfix engine on score. It will destroy the purpose. Alright, so I've got 630 points and zero items. Let's pick up this money. And look at that. We've got a dollar sign. One item. Grabbing the ampersand. Let's go. The wooden key. All the classics. And here we are, just picking up regular old gems and getting points for it. Let's throw this dollar sign away. Okay, well, now I'm going to throw all of these away if, they all, if they're all going to have great messages like that. Wood key. Why did it laugh at me? And the ampersand. Oh lord, what's happening in there? That one's kind of a mess to use, but I, I do like that. They're, they actually are getting another counter out of it, kind of. Oh, totally. That's got to be the Million Dollar Man. It's not even the first ZZT game that's, that's done that. I wish it would let me crank up my score, though, just to see what happens. For one thing, though, even though it says, yeah, you can go up to 9,999, once you hit 1,000, it's going to kind of run into the item number, and that's going to be awkward. At that point, you might as well just use the one digit as your item, and then just always give thousands of points. Although I guess other things would just give you single digit points and break it. Still, this one is definitely one of the like more interesting things. Far up. Oh wow, this is like a full full world. Set health. These guns? Yes, okay. Touch the object and it says your health is 250. You can go get hit by the guns as you wish, and it will set it back again. Simple trick, much easier than the counter sending engines, and used exclusively for health. Simply do these two commands. End game, and give health. End game sets it to zero, and give health sells it back to a positive number. Does not really end your game, for end game will not work until after the following command is executed. Well, until the cycle ends. Don't don't listen to half the things in this encyclopedia. I think we were we were much better about avoiding misinformation in the previous stream. All right, but sure enough, you know, I can play in the spinning gun fields as much as I like. Well, maybe not as much as I like. You can die. There we go, back to 250. Now, I swore this did mention the... They meant, I remember something explaining this concept, but mentioning that sometimes it doesn't work and your game does go into game over mode. And That's because that's what happens if the cycle ends up ending after the end game command, which normally won't happen unless you have like a long loop and happen to max out the number of commands per cycle. But it can be dangerous. We didn't get that bit of beep. Why does nothing ever want to work? Oh! I know why. Oh, I gotta install that too. Yeah. Okay.
Uh, well, I thought I'd be able to fix it right away. I never actually authenticated with Twitch for all the API stuff for this stream. I just do that at the start of every stream normally. But also, I moved a bunch of stuff, and I apparently have a hard-coded directory somewhere in my code still, so... Sorry, no redeems. No, even I can't do it. I have to, like, replay an old one in the backlog. A bip. It's important. It should if I do it like all good and proper, but it's a pain. There's a reason why, like everybody just uses like one of two stream elements or equivalent sites out there i'm just the jackass who like doesn't like to do that t pressed this engine recognizes when you light a torch just try it think of it an engine with the power of super zzt's hint label too bad it only works in a dark room this is, this is the trouble with ZZT and the encyclopedia's many exploits. Here we are, we found a way to detect a keyboard input. Just make sure you're in a dark room and every single board in which you want to use it. Also, you can only have one torch. Also, now you have unlimited torches. Allows for another use of the torch counter, does it? That's not... I lit a torch. Thank you for telling me, game. I would not have been able to figure this out otherwise. Is there anything in here? Missed, missed opportunity to make a fun dark room. Uh, I think Phoebus uses it to detect when you've run out of torch? When you've used your last torch, yes. Okay, you got me, you got me. Somebody did, in fact, make their game entirely dark. Counter inventory. Saying has a brother? Two plus item will allow you to use one of three items, which are stored under the counter ammo, torches, and gems. It will take away one of these and acknowledge that you've used one. Furthermore, only items in which you have at least one left will appear. It is different from the usual flag-based inventory because it uses counters instead, and things can run out after more than one use. Okay, yeah, so we take things, and then we give them back. Item. What we got? Item A, let's go. Wonderful example. Oops. Item B. Okay. Item C. Incredible. I mean, it works. It just doesn't do it. It doesn't do a good job of selling itself. There's definitely games where, like, your torches will be med kits and you can heal yourself and such. This is just... It couldn't come up with even a, a hypothetical for what these items might be. Multi-value gems. Flashing gem. Pick up the gems. You notice that the green ones are worth one. Blue are worth 5, red 20, and purple 100. As you collect gems, they leave behind empty spaces, so the object scans for empties, then turns them into boulders if it finds them. It can test the color of the boulder and give you gems accordingly. Do you... Do you need the boulder step? Can't you just check for a color to empty? Does... I know some elements are weird about that, but I think you can just say, like, if any blue empty and... directly detect that. Then it changes the boulder back into an empty, then into an empty, then into a fake, so it blends in with the floor. I think you can. 
Be sure you have no empties in your room or we'll give you gems for it. The room should use fakes for floors. There's one sort of annoying bug. When you step on a gem, it gives you one gem, and then gives you the rest of what it's worth. Yeah, so you can't get five gems, you have to step on a blue gem and then step off for four more. It's a little awkward in practice. I like what it's doing, but when it puts them next to each other like that... find out. This is a, a very easy thing to check, to test. First, I think we need some fakes for the room. Okay, maybe it doesn't. I might just be remembering wrong. Ah, I did not want to hit that key. Well, it should be the same either way. That works. Man, I can't type today. That's as elaborate as we need, actually. And we'll actually do this for the matter. Let's see. Let's learn something. Okay, it is not detecting a blue empty. Still not. Okay, yeah, that, that just might be a weird one. I know you can't do it with, like, star colors. So, well, there we have it. Oop. So, not as unnecessary as I thought. And they use some flashing gems for random ones. Next row, pick up sensor. Oh. Well, it already sensed something. Give me health. Uh-oh. This seems... Ah, yes, okay. Because I'm... I have... Gems and I'm not supposed to or something. Alright. Oh, maybe it's the torches. Let's see. Item pick up sensor. The object keeps checking to see if the player has a torch, and if he does, he goes to the menu. Then it takes away the torch. This can't be used in a dark room because your torch counter has to be empty. If you want, you can make a font so the torches look like something else. It doesn't have to be a menu either. You could have it just set some flag to say you got a particular item. Be sure it's some other color than brown, though. Why not? It doesn't even have to be a torch. Same thing can work for gems or ammo, but you have to check for 5 ammo because that's how much a box gives you. Love this fast-paced gameplay where every time you pick up a torch... One point. Give me one point. That's a little nicer. Like I said, the, the having to walk off thing is a little... Well, actually, this one shouldn't have to walk off. I should have just... It seemed... It still seemed... Oh, I saved it. It still seemed kind of laggy. Ah, there's only one more of these anyway. I think it's just because it's playing the ammo sound also after the gem that makes it feel laggy. And it's getting in the gem. Honestly... 
I think some action games could have gone away with doing this, especially since you can shoot gems to break them. There could be some, some danger in accidentally destroying your ammo. Okay, and lastly for this world, physical counters. Oh boy. Coins. You may pick up as many coins as you please. Your limit is 59. You can also have your coins stolen by the old man, or you can buy a red key. There we go, this is that, that good kind of setup I love. Hello, you're just in time for coin collecting, apparently. This innovative engine uses the position of the main object to determine how many of the item you have. When you get coins, it goes east. When you lose coins, it goes west. It even acts like a real counter, and if something tries to take more than you have, it won't take any at all. Oh, that's clever. It simply leaves a marker to achieve this. This engine is sort of delayed because it deals with outside objects and messages. It also only works within one board. You can expand the limit by using multiple main objects. Oh, thank you for the gift sub. Congrats, Sarfugal. All my redeems are once again busted, as is the tradition. There are several ways you could expand the limit, perhaps by using multiple main objects. If used in an actual game, it would be wise to hide the object in the space and move around it. Engine first appears in Chrono Wars 9, didn't this? Oh. I don't remember anything like this in the Chrono Wars games, but I guess it was. Alright, how much does this key cost? Ten coins. I want to see it... Okay, I don't have enough. I want to see it fail to take the coins. How long is this process? Noisy. And then there's this jerk of an old man. Again, like, useful idea, but difficult to find a situation in which you'd actually want to use it. If it's just existing on one board. Oh, yeah, that's everything then. Okay. Yeah, I guess you could do it as like a casino thing, but you gotta you gotta cash out at the end anyways. Otherwise unless you're cramming your entire casino onto a single screen. Alright, how's World 5 gonna treat us? You got eleven of these. Ooh, this is gonna be a meaty one. This is also gonna be like an important one, I'm sure. Flags and conditions. Menu is about flags and conditions. It's quite a general topic, and many engines and other worlds may fit right in here. Out here, you will learn how to better manipulate flags, and how to read conditions and elements of your surroundings more efficiently. Yeah, I don't think they pick up, but the birds, the birds are going back there. I'm trying to be quiet, but keep the mic open so maybe you can hear the birds. Probably can't, though. Yeah, this is also where we're going to get some... Take a shot every time it says the flag limit is 9. Sorry again, ellipses. All the redeems are broken. I broke everything. Is is bird o'clock 24-7 here now? This is the birdhouse. It's, it's where I live. On researching flags in the file format, oh wait a minute, is this going to be like, hey, the flag limit is 10, not 9? Because that would be fantastic. The flag limit is 10, not 9. Boom. <laughs> Good job, Kronos. If the game is normal locked, the flag secret is set, that counts as any other flag. So if you think it's smart to lock your game, it's not. It can easily be unlocked, and it just wastes flag space. If I remember right, 
Does it actually set the flag? Like, I think it puts it in there with, like, zero length, and ZZT specifically checks those bytes. No, that doesn't make sense either. I don't know. But, like, if you just load up town... Do I have town in here? Of course not. Why would I have town? But, like, if you just load up town, it will not have a flag already set. I didn't want to close that. We were still reading. If you try to set an 11th flag, the 10th is erased. That's correct. As far as I know, setting a flag more than once is not harmful. Correct. Good. This is it. The 2002 version is redeeming itself. It's opening. The very first thing it's doing is correcting all this, this weird misinformation that got out there. Furthermore, many of these engines are sensors, which means the principal object actually goes in a loop. Checking for the presence of the flag. This has proven extremely useful. Alright, I wasn't looking. Pressure plates. Let's go. Oh, some stuff vanished. Pressure plates. Step on each fake to watch the light or door activate. The ones on the corner are like items you can walk on to acquire. Push the boulder onto the place to activate stuff as well. Uh-huh, so we just look for a colored fake that suddenly stops existing because it's been covered up. The last one at the top edge is the most efficient. What it actually does is checks if the player's aligned to two objects. Cool, now there's a dog also. That leaves two spots that will activate the engine, so make sure your button is at one and the other is a wall or something else not accessible by the player. Alright, let's set off some sensors. That one's the clock. And you'll note they're using an object instead of an actual boulder, because a normal boulder would erase the fake once you pushed it on top. And in later years we discovered if you just give the boulder stats, then it would be able to tell what's underneath it. Ooh. Secret. No. Well, what's the point of that one? Untouched. And the scroll. A scroll with no purpose. Well, that was worth it. I can get myself trapped here. Oh, wait. Hang on. How did I manage it? The first time. Who knows? Those come in handy. People use those. Good stuff. Good to teach people. Composer engine update. This is not, this is a maze. This is not a composer engine. Composer's engine. Input a program in the top row with the input object. Run the program and it'll go across the program, making the car move. First appeared as a musical engine in Music Box. It's actually very complicated. Car, the input device, and the buffer reading device. Right, so we're just gonna... It's not that scary. We're just... Telling this thing how to move. Terminal point. Terminal point. I guess that's a knop. Rewind. The constant pop-ups in this are terrible. Run program in loop. I was probably going to use yeah, the whole thing. What? Ah, okay. Until it hits the a blank. I am not writing something to solve this maze. Sorry. But you can 
do some, do some programming in ZZT without using the editor. There we go. This is what we're after. Make some music. We can play some beats. Listen to my beautiful song. And this is not how you make ZZT music. But if you really want to, I guess you can. I do my best. Counterflex. Didn't we see this already? We did. Are we getting some repeat entries here? That kind of makes it even more awkward because now if something gets an update, you gotta update it in multiple places. That's gonna kill this online concept. Oh, you know. You know an example is going to be good when it has to have a security door. Heat little engine uses four flags from 0 to 15. Does he already have 0 to 65,000? Well, not really. And this one. And this one wastes four flags. It's probably worthless, but it's a neat trick. The ZZT story. Also, some messages you can send to the main object as commands. Yeah, so I guess we're just assembling a counter out of individual bits as flags here. Don't do that. Ugh. This just seems unpleasant. Okay, clear counter. Yeah, thank you for the set to seven. Why not? Give me that value. Well, good enough. Oh, I do like the little binary display up there. Not increment. Okay, well, I had my fun, I guess. And I would assume that this is to clear out all those flags. I need more torches. Help file. Oh, what a lovely looking board. Actually, let's uh let's take a short break here. We'll be back in just a minute.
And I'm back. Alright, let's learn about these help files. Oh, okay, this is this kind of help file. Type help on the plus help on the cheat prompt. So that's the flag help and the object reacts. Alright, what can you teach me, help file? A game! Shoot the white H. You just won the game! That was a pleasant change of pace. Memory saving. Why is it blinking? Why are all these boards blinking? Calm down, Kronos. This one doesn't have a white H. It, it has a little guy. It's very annoying to only have ten flags, or less, set at a time. You can, however, clear a flag and set another one in its place. Here are eight efficient ways of reducing, reusing, and recycling flags. This is like 2002 clickbait. Flag saving tips include deleting old flags, zapped flags, environmental flags, sequenced, piggybacking, inverse, no doubled counter. Oh, this is going to be a lot of text. Clear a flag when you're done. Okay, it's all going to be set and checked in the same room. Just send messages to zap a label instead. Like this. A demonstration of a remote zap, though. That's... That should probably have its own entry, honestly. I don't think that was really common knowledge. Okay, and then we just have our door have its touch label and do that instead. No set, no clear, no if. The setter sends a message to the door. Environmental flags, wait. Okay, deleting was our first. This will only do the job of a flag that is only in one room and set in the same, blah blah blah. Ah, uh, okay, yes. So this is where you just set a flag by like putting an invisible wall or something and then later checking on the same board if it exists or not. So much code examples here. I thought my one sentence explanation there was kind of covered it. Oh my lord. This really is reading an encyclopedia. Okay, and you can use normals and fakes, or invisibles and empties, to hide it from the player. A lot of text. Alright, sequence flags. That's, that's just clearing your flag. Piggybacking flags. Okay, this is like an actual technique. There are two flags to set, and have one one flag set for the both of them. So here we set items instead of item one and item two, and then we can check. We have to check both flags. It lets us cram two pieces of information in one. Inverse flags. Why would you do this? Unless you're making Hugo's House of Horrors. Set. What is he talking about? Yeah, you can clear flags as many times as you like, but you cannot set as many times as you like. I have already displayed an object disappearing after its flag is set, but what if, for instance, a flag represents a memory or an experience? 
You either place a book somewhere for the player to read. As he reads it, a flag is set. This represents him knowing something that he will apply later, but only if the flag is set. That's just... That's... That's flags. That's what you do with them, yes. Think about it. The player himself will use the book for reference, and each time he touches it, flag is set over and over again. I'd love to have my memory erased every time that I have to keep rereading this book. A doubled flag serves no purpose and is wasteful. That's... Okay, oh. So is this... Alright, here's a program represent... I think this is actually acting on the information that was corrected at the start of this. This sounds like it's warning you about double setting a flag. Set make ammo. Here is an efficient solution. Yeah, wow. This is just like paragraphs and paragraphs of just blatantly false information. You can completely ignore that section. It doesn't matter. You can set the same flag a hundred times in a row. It's either set or it's not. Nothing double sets. That's not a thing. Okay, well... Counter flags. Go to counter flags. Using torches, eight new flags can be used. We, I think we saw that last time, except with just four. Alright. Can we at least have some fun with some methods in action here? God, there's still more, huh? Okay, so this is our... yeah. You know what? I'm gonna save this one and go back to it late. Okay, game. This is probably one worth actually making sure to use solid HUD for, because then we can actually look at our flags and see what these are doing. I'll make a mental note to do that some other time, because I think this is also going to be a... Yeah, I think this is going to be the last one of these we get through today. If at South Edge, this will be a fun one. Nothing can be put to the South Edge. It's a bug of ZZT, but once again, I take advantage of a bug and create an If at South Edge engine. Touch the yellow object to pull it towards yourself, then touch the green object to see if the yellow one is at the South Edge. Simple, the object tries to put a slider to the east or west. If it can't, it must be at the South Edge. How am I supposed to... There it goes. Sure are. Oh. There we go. I lost it. You can see a, a brief flicker, maybe, of a slider. I don't know if anything uses this. I definitely considered it when I was doing my like Yahtzee ZZT engine. Basically just putting a boulder in a random direction, but having that object be like in the bottom row, or above the bottom row, so it would only work for three of those four directions. Did not end up going with it, but... You can try and make something out of that. If at edge. Ooh, any edge. Touch me and I'll move away. Shoot me and I'll tell you if I'm at the edge of the board. Oh, and he even gave me some ammo. Negative, not at the edge. Again, the the text is just so much more than is really needed. But yeah, it's just gonna put something in a direction. And if that thing exists, then it can tell. Well, I just got it stuck. You live there now.
and gate. Gates that work. Sorry, everybody. And by Kronos30, inventor of and. Has it ever angered you that there is no and in ZZT? You know, where a command would look like this. A flag one and flag two and not flag three. Well, there is a word that works exactly like and, and that's if. The following works perfectly. If flag one, if flag two, if not flag three. Instead of using and, you can use if, with the exact same result as having two or more commands, checking the status of each flag but much shorter. This is useful information to have. So try to push the boulders next to the object. It rejects them. Now stand next to it. You don't budge. That's because this object is doing this command. If blocked south, if not contact, put south empty. Right, right, okay. So I can hang out with the, the green out. But the boulders cannot. That's practical. Good inclusion. Will this be an or gate? No. This will be forced to floor. Why is this in the flags world? The forests aren't, once again, redeems are broken. I know we've got the F word on screen. They're more like Super ZZT or Megazook's forests. They change into fakes. Also, the ammo leaves behind floor. Okay, empties get changed into fakes. Some other uses for this are forests that leave behind normal so you can't tread that area again, forests that leave behind enemies, and stuff like that. This is not supposed to be in this world. This has nothing to do with flags. You screwed up. Inventory engine. Weirdness like. <laughs> Thank you, weirdness. Press question mark. Type plus I. Press enter. An inventory window has just popped up. You can pick up items and use them with this. The item will be used in the direction of the player. This is almost exactly like the famed Megazooks engine. The object checks if the flag I is set. If you set it using the cheat, it opens the window and use the item, sends a message to everything. And they react if they're next to the player. Notice how I've expanded the blue strip and you can see which items you have. They are simply independent objects that change character according to whether the flags are set or not. All right, what cool stuff will we find here? A red key. A hammer. But not a rock. Okay. Smash the rock with my hammer. Two pebbles. So a lot of games actually did use this. Very, very few did an on-screen inventory display, but there's a whole a whole slew of games that make you bust out the cheat prompt at pretty much every time you want to interact with things. A perfect place for skipping stones. Ooh, can we pick them up again? Nice. Good attention to detail. Now for the hammer. Great demonstration, very good. Good use of flags. Custom cheats. That looks scary. Ah, here we go. You can just kill to kill everything. Max, max of items, energy, to get an energizer. Germania. Makes her name of the cheat is a set flag and does a neat effect accordingly. Warning, at maximum, items are very unstable. You have to make sure you don't get another of that item or it will become zero or negative. This is especially bad with health. For this reason, max does not totally max out health, or gems for that matter, because of the Germania cheat. Alright, let's get to work. Sure enough, I've got a good amount of everything. But it's getting dicey. So let's kill. 
Hmm. Oh. We let that board run for like 10 seconds. And look what we did. We broke it. Oh, this is gonna, yeah, affect the existing bullet. All right, let's not let's not fool ourselves. Germania. Oh, hey. Oh wow, that wasn't the actual Energizer theme. The Gem Mania cheat also plays it. That's wonderful. I really like the fade out though. Very good. I don't have the patience to overflow the gems counter. Maybe we'll get lucky and something else will let me. Been left, right? Yes. This one goes. Okay, so we are filling this one out. The portable merchant. Alright, plus store. You got it. What What can we buy? Three torches for three gems. And you can see our giant torch display is causing problems. can try and overflow this. What will happen here? Nothing. Okay. There we go. Whoa. I don't... I don't think I've seen a game actually do a store like that. Any kind of purchasing at any time like that. It's very Zargon. Search. Exactly. Search engine. You have lost the key to the door. Well, you need to dial a key, my friend. You must go around the field looking for it. Search around in your area by pressing question mark and then plus search. It will tell you if you find it. Okay. This seems great gameplay. This would be so much fun. Good game design. The key is lost down there. That seems rather unnecessary to do this whole setup with. You made it here. Woo. Very enthusiastic. Portable merchant. What do we got next? The color sensor. This... This was also in the colors world. And also has nothing to do with flags. Sure is. That's not a flag, though. Nope, not a flag. No flags here. No flag or none. Or no ZZT color. What a weird screw up. I'm very curious. Alright, custom passwords. Somewhere in this room he learned about the password to use in the next room. Yeah, once again, we are opening the cheat prompt. This is just like many other engines in this world. Alright. Cool. Minimalist ping pong path, I guess. What's the password? Go north! Write that down.
This is a good board. I feel like Anna is missing out on this one. Go north, actually. Yeah, they don't warn you about how, you know, if you type anything incorrectly here, it does set a flag and you can't hit the flag limit and that can be bad because nobody's going to clear whatever the hell that flag is I just typed. Book a north. That's right. Oh, there's not even an exit in this room. Back to the previous room. Oh, we're blocked off up top, so there's only two left, if that. Quadrant sensor. You are east of me. This object will tell you what direction you are from it. That's a lot better than aligned or seek alone. The most four object. The main object constantly places solid blocks to seek to establish that direction. The other object sense for the presence of these blocks. If it senses both blocks, it displays the message your direction to me. For cardinal directions, the main object senses if you are aligned, then checks for which direction is blocked in. That's cute. It updates very quickly. And I guess the last one. Cross world flags. Thank you, ZZ Tier with 50 aliases. Okay, it's simple, yet a bit complex. You are making a game, and since you don't have enough room, you gotta make another world. Crap. Now you can't transfer your objects. Now you can. The object check checks what flags were set, assigns a number to them. In the newer world, the item checks what numbers you entered and set the flag that goes along with them. A lot of typos in this one. Pretty keen, huh? Yeah, it's really cool. Touch a few objects in this room. Not all. Maybe one or two. Then leave the room via the door. Touch the O. After zero to three numbers change, quit and open the world named Objects and enter the password. Special thanks to Jojo is Joe for a chat we had about inventory engines. Oh, to be a fly on the wall. If not for him, I wouldn't have thought up this engine. Remember, I didn't make this engine all that flashy. So go ahead and add numbers. Maybe even add letters for when you have more flags. Who knows? All right. So I won't take everything. I'm going to leave the money, actually, because that's probably just money. I want to know what these other things are. A little whistle? A ukulele! I should have known. Well, I'm glad we have the ukulele. And the whoopee cushion. Now we're prepared for the next world. Hook me up with this password. 31,000. Cross world flag engine. Okay, remember your password because it's different depending on the object that you touched. Touch the zeros in order to select, then touch the O to see what flags were set in the previous world. Easy enough. Hmm, it appears you picked up a ukulele in the previous world. Congratulations, in the past game you got a whoopee cushion. What if I just make some stuff up? Okay, it just doesn't care. Awesome! A ukulele you picked up in the last world. Can can we like do a game jam to make the game with these items? I would really this sounds like a lot of fun. I want the ukulele whoopee cushion money game. Looks like that's going to be a wrap, then. What's World 6 looking like? We're not playing this tonight. Anti-cheats? 
This is a bad world. I don't want to play this world. Can't see everything, really. But it also seems a lot shorter, only 8 entries. I guess there's only so many cheats that need to be prevented. Alrighty then. That was, a uh, fun. We got, we got a lot more false information in that one. But I think that's gonna, that's gonna do it for today. Still a useful little utility. I have to say, most of that stuff seemed familiar from the old 3C version. I'm still leaning on this one being better, even if it's a bit more of a pain to navigate. Because you're gonna get that same incorrect flag information in the old version, but at least this one has one opening scroll that kind of attempts to steer you in the right direction. If you do play the old one, then you will just read all about the dangers of double setting flags paragraph after paragraph you'll be you'll be scared straight you'll never do it ever again but it doesn't matter whatsoever but i don't think there's anything too exciting and new in this i guess the project just kind of fizzled out a bit past a certain point and I think this format probably made it like difficult for actually people to bother. I think if the, like the submission process is just like always open, whenever you want, just send something in. I feel like there's not going to be motivation to push yourself in that direction. Whereas if you say, "Hey, new encyclopedia is gonna gonna drop end of August." Then people would have a deadline and think, okay, I gotta, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this demonstration roll. I gotta show people how they can take a ukulele into the next world. That is gonna do it for tonight. Hope you all had fun. Thank you all for joining me on this journey through the ZZT Encyclopedia. If you enjoyed the streams, you can always catch any ones you missed on YouTube. They usually, show, they usually show up after a day or two. Sometimes they show up closer to a week because I'm very bad at remembering to actually publish them. And I think that's going to do it for... Whoa, what happened to my voice there? I think that's going to do it for today. Uh, we'll be back again on Sunday. Assuming my internet doesn't crap out on me again this time, I would like to play some more Star Wars CZT games that haven't been preserved before. They're just sitting there in the queue already. You can spoil yourselves on them. You can all play them right now, well in advance. You can know everything about them. You probably won't want to. They didn't seem too great. You never know. Alright, we'll be back again. Continuing our journey through the encyclopedia next Friday. Hope to see you all then. Thanks for watching. Later. <laughs>